Welcome back to the Corberlang channel. Uh, it recently occurred to me that some of you may be wanting to try a little stop motion yourself, so I thought I'd do a, maybe a crash course on how to get to where I am and share some of my secrets so you don't have to waste so much time watching YouTube videos. All right, let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do is uh, get these two apps for your phone, Stop Motion Studio and Power Director. And uh, first of all, I'll say that you're going to do all your work on Stop Motion first, take all your pictures, and then when you open up the second uh, app there, the Power Director, then you could uh, import from the other app all your stop motions and then you could video edit. Okay, so for uh, Stop Motion Studio, you're going to open it up. Go to New Project, there we go, and uh, first of all, you're going to go to that little settings wheel there on the bottom left, click on that, and switch that to 9 frames per second. Yeah. That was a recommendation from one of the videos from a teacher from a class on, on stop motion. So First I should show you uh, this bottom right, these little faders. If you hit that, you can uh, change the camera focus but I'll warn you that if you get too close you lose the resolution so I wouldn't overuse it. Uh, it it makes better sense to move your camera closer rather than use that feature okay uh, go to the camera there we go on the left side that fader there is the onion skin that will be unlocked if you have a paid subscription if not don't worry about it set that yeah 50% so uh, you got half the picture behind half the picture in front if you don't move it at all and it looks like it's sort of in the middle, it doesn't seem to work. You have to just kind of uh, activate it by playing, like moving it a bit. Uh, timer is there if you want to use. Uh, I would suggest that for more simple shots, like a rolling vehicle or something like that. Not necessarily for something more difficult because some shots take longer to set up. If you think you can move each of your movements within a time segment of 5, 10, 15 seconds, then you can set the timer. Take your pictures. Move your thing along, take another picture, move it along. Uh, I'll discuss the tips later in a different section. I'm just trying to get you familiar with the program. And then after all, all your pictures are taken, when you exit out and come back into the program, you go up to the top right, hit that uh, button there, and then you can uh, select your project, go to Share, and then you go to upload and then uh, it'll once more ask on my phone anyway it'll say save you hit that one more time and then it'll say file was successfully saved now before it seems to activate unless you wait a bit of time uh, if you rename it that's what I do with my phone then uh, you can instantly uh, open it up in power director So you can close that program, open up Power Director, go into there, open the program, new project. I go 16-9 ratio. Uh, edit project. There you go. Now you're going to start with videos. That's what you want to enter into this first. Uh, I will say before we do that, uh, this program kind of works like a cut and paste over a length of time. The way the cursor works vertically, uh, whatever it's lined up with on the video will be exactly in line with on the audio that that cursor is lined up with. So uh, if you had a punch that you wanted to line up with the, the attack of the song or, a, you know, right at that moment, you can sync it up which it, timing with the sound and video is important in my opinion. After you've inserted your video into the, the file, you can add music. So you've inserted the music. <clears throat> That's with that button down there. Uh, you can also go to these two buttons up on the top right. They are uh, the faders for all your different uh, volumes. 
Now, if you haven't a paid subscription, I'm not sure how many tracks you will have unlocked, but uh, you can adjust the volumes there. I would, uh, if you have the option, try it on a different device because sometimes the way you mix it on a phone might not turn out the way you want it to on a television. Uh, okay, so uh, you've got your video, you've got your, uh, your audio, you're happy with it. Go to the top right, upload file. Right from here, we can go right to YouTube or you can save it to your phone. And uh, there you have it. That's uh, basically how to use those programs fairly simple. All right, so back to stop motion studio. Uh, when you're writing your stop motion, you want to take some pictures, you can write things kind of in consideration to how difficult the shot might be. You'll notice even in video sometimes, like a car rolls up to a shot, and instead of having the guy get out of the vehicle and film all that, they'll show an onlooker, somebody watching the car roll up, and then you'll see the guy slam the door, and that'll be the next shot. You know, in stop motion, the same idea could, you know, is a lot easier. Vehicle shots, more or less, are easy to shoot. But it would be boring just to have a bunch of vehicles. So, I mean, you got to have some contrast. For me, it's uh, either driving action or, you know, things in the air, fighting, hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat. And usually besides that, uh, yeah, there's not too much else. There's some shooting. I have a lot of, like, action scenes. <laughs> Try to keep out the dialogue. But, uh, yeah, you can do things however you want. I will throw in real quick, there's one other app that you can use, and there's different ones. I've seen AI for the mouth uh, replacement, and you can mix in those. I try to use it as little as possible, because when you switch from even play motion video to stop motion, it, it's a different feel. So I prefer to have just stop motion and then just a tight shot of just a you know, quick sentence or something, if needed. In my opinion, the story should tell itself without the dialogue. That could... That way they can just talk about whatever they want. Uh, okay, uh, if doing a driving scene is definitely a good thing to start with. It's easy. You can take your favorite G.I. Joe vehicle. But uh, some people use a ruler to keep it straight. I don't think it's really necessary. Like I said, this is a basement uh, production kind of thing. We all have jobs. We don't have the time to do it professionally. So uh, we're just going to focus on the main things. And that's kind of easing in. So... When you do your first shot, you just, well, your first shot is going to be your car started off where it wants to be. Then just move it ever so slightly for your first picture shot, and then just a little bit more for the next one. And then depending on how fast you want it to accelerate, you can experiment with that yourself. Jump to like a further shot and then keep that distance maybe on, you know, if you don't have an onion skin, you could measure it out by eye on the table, you know, a couple inches each time as it's going faster. And then if you want it to slow down, just make sure you do the reverse to how you started it, depending, or you could have it stop quick if you wanted with the screech sound effect added. But, uh, you know, ease out and your last one will just be a slight movement before the next shot, which stops. Uh, I try not to have too many dead shots. If I do, I take another picture. I try not to copy it because it looks like it's frozen. I don't know why the eye can notice on that rather than taking another picture of nothing moving. But uh, I try to keep copying and pasting photos in stop motion to a minimal. Uh, another tip before, anyway, that anyway that's one example of a driving scene. Easy to do. But uh, another tip I wanted to say is right off the bat, you want to pick up a camera stand. The cheapest one you can get is from those StickBot toys. Perfect camera stand. You can adjust one like I did to a tripod and then I have one just for the table uh, so that camera stand you want to tape it down when you're doing this shot so when you touch the camera you don't have to worry about the thing sliding if it moves on you it's a pain because you got to start over so tape your stand down and then your set as well if you're doing like a Lego set or a toy set tape it down that way it doesn't move if you're doing a vehicle you have no choice it's rolling it's got to move so you don't tape it down. The idea is for me is having fun with my vintage toys, so I don't really want to damage anything. So I don't take anything to the ex to that extent. Uh, like 
drilling their feet out to bolt them or some people cope out the backs of their legs and stuff so they can bend further. Not what I'm going to be doing anyway, so I won't get into that, but it's definitely something you can do if that's what you're interested in. I don't have the time. Well, maybe, I don't, I don't know. Not right now anyway, maybe down the road. I would try something like that. Uh, another uh, tip of something else to shoot that's easier to do that's normally difficult is walking. And for that, I've kind of come up with my own little rigging system. Take the camera stand, set it on a large book, tape it down. Now I use, uh, there's these styrofoam cubes that you can use to make uh, flower designs out of fake flowers. Those cubes you can get from an arts and crafts store. Tape one of those to the book and then stick a chopstick in that and then stick a G.I. Joe into uh, the chopstick into the backpack hole. And then you can have it walk along and as he's walking, you slide the book along so that way the background's moving and the camera always stays focused on the figure walking. And then with the chopstick holding him up, you can start to practice the arm movements without worrying about the toy falling over. If you want to just take your favorite action figure and do a short little stop motion for your YouTube channel or whatever, uh, a lot of people use like stick tack, there's different things, but you want to stick the feet down to whatever table you're using. It makes it a lot easier. Sometimes I don't. I just try to get it right, use the onion skin and balance it. But uh, yeah, it's a very easy way. It, it's an effect, like I said, that just looks so unique. So it would be an addition to anybody's YouTube channel just to take your favorite toy, have him walk, take his gun or do a yo-jo, <laughs> whatever you want. Uh, Masters of the Universe, you can do some great stuff with them. They have a lot of cool vehicles with a lot of playability factors. Another thing with Motu is they have a few figures with mouths, like Trapjaw and Roboto, that move. They have other uh, stop-motion features on them, like uh, Triclops with the spinning eye, or many faces is pretty cool. You can play around with that with stop-motion. Uh, it's just a cool way to bring your, your toy to life. Nobody's really done this either as a YouTube channel with reviews. Well, I started doing it a little bit, but you could just have your action figure laid out and just show all the articulation in stop motion of the different toy. And I mean, that could be done, you know, without unlocking any extra features on the stop motion studio. Camera stand, just pointed down, have the figure laid on a table, whatever color Bristol board in behind and show all the different articulations as you review the toy. Fairly simple. Uh, Green screen, uh, otherwise known as chroma key, is a feature that you have to unlock either on Stop Motion Studio or Power Director. So I'll leave that up to to another review if you wanted to get into that. Uh, I will just say quickly, distance does seem to help with that, so you don't get the reflection of green on the toy. Less reflective toys help also. Sometimes less light is better with green screen because the lighting causes more reflections. You can play around now with the lighting and shadows and other realistic factors that you would not get in shooting in green screen. So, I mean, it is pretty fun. I went reverse. I did it the other way around. But I would, if I could do it again, start with just practical shooting, having fun. I like, I got a red light that I use. It kind of makes things dim and grim. And I can use it for like an emergency light coming on sometimes if the lights get shot out or... Whatever, just to make a scary feature, you can play around with your own lighting that way. I have a orange, it's like a stoplight that I use sometimes uh, for machine gun reflection. And that's another f uh, feature I could get into. Uh, when you're shooting a machine gun, every other frame in nine frames per second, you put a bright light on and... It looks wild when you play it back with a machine gun on and off. That's done with an orange light. If you don't have that, you could use anything, a lighter, a flashlight. Smoke is another uh, awesome effect to throw in, a practical effect with stop motion. Uh, I've seen people use cotton, so I used it for... Uh, I stole a little bit out of my wife's pillow there. She doesn't know. I cut it open, pulled some fluff out, and taped it to the back, and it was a perfect cloud. And I've seen other people use that for smoke and clouds and different various... Uh, like for stop motion, it's it's realistic looking anyway. Uh, but yeah, you can play around with like reflections and stuff, like slime and real things like that have that reflection, and they're they're really fun to shoot and play around with. But it's also just a way that uh, you can 
like for me, I spend a lot of time just staring at my toy collection. And if you don't just want to display it and you want to pull it out and play with it, hey, that rhymes, then you can have a little bit of fun and uh, you might enjoy it too. But uh, yeah, like I said, when you're writing, do a little storyboard, maybe makes, make it easier to shoot it with some more vehicle shots, a race. You can uh, make it interesting. When you watch other things, you'll notice the camera shots change very frequently. Sometimes they're only like two two seconds, one second, change, change, change. So, I mean, keep that in mind. Draw a little, uh, little sketch of how you want it to go. And a car chase can be fairly easy to shoot because they're, they all have wheels. I mean, your stop motion is fairly uh, effortless. And uh, you can make it pretty exciting with the right uh, camera shots. There's probably videos you could look up or just use a real movie as a blueprint like South Park kind of spoofs other things try that if that works for you I mean there's, there's different things you can do but uh, with nine frames per second it isn't that tedious it isn't that time consuming you can get a lot done in a short time especially if you're just making little clips for your YouTube channel that you can insert in to make your video better so uh, yeah if you have any questions just ask me in the comments I would be glad to help uh, if there's any other type of video like this that you want me to do, let me know. And uh, otherwise, yeah, keep on collecting toys and have a great day. Take care. What are we doing? We're brothers.